écoute euh, au rapide. Uh, as home, we are going to start the service <coughs> by singing this hymn, and then we see how the Lord will lead us again tonight through this evening. Oh, happy, <coughs> oh, happy, oh, I'm too low, too high. Oh, happy day, that is too high. Eh? Oh, happy day, with this much trust on thee, my Savior and my God. When may be slow, in heart we just enter this Let's sing another one. Um, cause, um, Lord, I'm coming home. Lord, I'm coming home. Yes. And then you go to God in prayer. A wonderful Oh. 
Let's just take with Psalm number one. Psalm one. Let's read it completely in full. From verse one to verse six. Best is the man that walk not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And it shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth his fruits in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, with and whatsoever he doth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the shaft which the wind drift away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment no sinner in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Yes, pray. Our wonderful Savior, our wonderful Lord, with, it is with a heart, Lord, of really grateful to you, that you are coming to stand again in your presence this uh, evening. Lord, you touch our hearts while we are in this world, not knowing you, just leaving us all the sinners, Lord. But through your wonderful mercy, you came, Lord, and you search each one of us, causing us, Lord, to know your name, to accept your word, to repent from our sins and to work now on this wonderful highway to heaven. Bless each one of us, Lord, who came today and the one who are following this service online. May the blood of our wonderful Savior and Lord Jesus Christ be upon each one of us. Lord, we are becoming so, you become so gracious to us so precious to you. In the way that, Lord, we are standing here knowing that we are standing in your presence, not in the church just to be some uh, church members, but something has touched our hearts to make us know that we are the children of the Most High. So be pleased to be in our midst in this evening. Be, Lord, most welcome to speak to us, to speak to our hearts, to cause us, Lord, to love you more, to serve you more, Lord. Lord, we are recommending to you, you care, the one who are at work, who cannot come because of a, a weakness of the bodies, Lord. All those things which are just uh, in our ways, Lord, when we want to serve you, we are just going to bring them to you, Lord. Bless us through this service, Lord. Speak to us, Lord, as a father to his own children. And be, Lord, praised as you must be. Because you are worth to be praised and to be worshipped. We ask it in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Let's uh, sit down, please. Um, yes, we can. We read the river. Um, what is the title again? I've forgotten. Gather the river. Gather the river. Thank you, Moses. Yes, we gather at the river the, for the beautiful river. Gather at the sand at the river that flows for the throne of God. Amen. And after this, you are going to sing, uh, it's not so wonderful. Mm -hmm. It's not wonderful. Eh? <clears throat> 
want you to do on When we the Savior we enter, we need the Savior to enter the glory land. Amen. When we the Savior we enter the glory land, we want to be wonderful. said when we will gather at the river when it is standing finally at the end of our race our course our journey standing where all the saints will be gathered to have one wonderful worship and praising the Lord for what he has done for each one of us with thanksgiving you are going to stand up again And you're going to take the Psalm 105, as we did read it the last time, from verse 1 to verse 15. 105, from 1 to 15. We are so sorry for the beloved one who you who are listening, who are following us in French. We have a serious problem now. We don't have no translator during the week, so which means the services are in English. <coughs> Because we are living in a country where the English is the main language, and uh, so we have to use that language. When the Lord will provide us, pray for us, so we have uh, everything so that uh, everybody could be following us on, uh, on different languages, so as the Lord will be providing. But may the Lord bless you for your, for your, your kindness and being faithful to what we are doing. All oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Call upon his name and make known his deeds among the people. Sing unto him, sing psalms and unto him. Talk ye all of all his wondrous works. Glory in his holy name. Yes. This is very wonderful. This is something we have to do. We have to be proud to be in this family. Uh -huh. It is like, you know, when you are born in a, 
a royal family or whatever, you're not ashamed to say that you are from this royal uh, seat. So we should be the, to, should be the same, we should not be ashamed or afraid to glorify ourselves in his holy name. Let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face evermore. Remember his marvelous works that he has done, his wonders and the judgment of his mouth. O oh, ye seed of Abraham his servant, ye children of Jacob his chosen. He's chosen. We are the same people too. Not from Jacob, but we are chosen, elected from God. He is the Lord our God. His judgment are in all the earth. He had remembered his covenant forever. The word which he commanded to a thousand generations. Which covenant he made with Abraham and his oath unto Isaac. And confirm the same unto Jacob for a law, and to Israel for an everlasting covenant, saying unto thee, Will I give the land of Canaan, the lot of your inheritance, when there were but a few men in, the num in number, yeah, very few and strangers in it. When they went from one nation to another, from one kingdom to another people. He suffered no man to do them wrong. Yea, he proved kings for the six. Saying, touch not mine anointed, and do my prophet no harm. Moreover, he called for a famine upon the land. He broke the whole staff of bread. Okay, when for he sent a man before them, even Joseph, who was sold for a servant. Yeah. I, I went a little bit far. Okay, we can stop here. Let's pray again. Heavenly Father, we are presenting again to you now, to come in your presence, knowing that you are the teacher, Lord, you are the preacher, you are everything for us. No man in our midst is higher than another. But all of us, Lord, we are just depending on you to know, to receive from you, Lord, what is helpful for us to complete our journey. So speak to us as we said, Lord. Bless your servant, we'll be speaking from your behalf. Help me, Lord, to, trans, uh, to, uh, to, to pass this message, Lord, with faithfulness, respect and with faith. And may it touch the heart of your people like it done. In the, in the old ages when you, you were on here, or when you ever spoke to you people, Lord, the heart or always gush and the way turning the faces to you. Lord, be with us now that you're going to listen to your word. We pray and we ask all those things in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. You know, there's uh, uh, two things I want to say before we start. I was following something on uh, online yesterday, but uh, the sound was not so good. So I said I was going to listen to it, but when I came home, I heard something else to do. Maybe tonight I'm going to listen to it. It tells about a testimony which uh, was for something which happened in Africa again. I don't know if you heard it from the church of uh, our brothers who are gathering in Lubumbashi. And I think it is something which happened some time ago, because from what I understand, it's like it was from October, but I'm not sure because the sound was so bad I was at work. So I said I'm going to try to find it in the website itself of the Church of Lubumbashi. It was about a sister, okay, Kako, and they got a baby, and the baby I think passed away after three months. As a baby girl. So the mom was broken. She was crying to God, said, Why this happened to me? We went through so many difficulties. I don't know if I heard it properly because as I said, I'm going to go to listen to it again. And uh, so she complained to God. She prayed. She said she was completely after hope. 
And one day she had a, I don't know how, a voice telling her, get yourself ready, prepare yourself, dress properly, dress in a decent way. You are going to get a visit today. So, from what I told her, so she, she prepared herself and then she went to church. Of course, she didn't have no bad coming home, so it was a, the day it was a prayer meeting day. And to church, while we were in the church, she just been taught up in some vision, or she went somewhere while she was sitting in the church. And there she, someone was leading her to a place. And when she got there, I said, go to listen to it, and I will listen to it too. Uh, she saw a group of people. And for the person who was uh, taking her there, she asked her a question, said that if your daughter was, did travel to go to the States, were you going to be sad? She said, no, no of course not. I'll be happy. I said, okay. But your daughter didn't go to the States, but she went to heaven, to the paradise. So, are you going to start with a sad because she bet she went to paradise then and you le she left you? She didn't know. She said, no, now come with me. She, she, the, the person showed her some people. A lot of people were in the paradise. He said, do you, do you recognize her? He said, no. He said, your daughter is there. It was, now, it was not a, a, a baby girl of... Uh, <laughs> three months uh, old, but she was now a, a, a young lady. She said, I don't know who she is. She said, the daughter is there. She said, remember she has a mark on her arm? He said, yes. So I told her, listen, I took her here to take her back home. So why are you so broken? Because she's happy, more happy here than where you were. I said, no, you go back. You're coming, you are, we are going to come to to join you to, to, to join them shortly and said that so very soon, very soon in the glory. So you come back here. So that is a testimony. And I was listening to it. I said, We are coming to a uh, what I want to say to a, uh, a position when we, where we have to know exactly who we are and where we are going. If God is giving, giving such kind of testimonies to people, said you are going to come back here very soon. It's what he told her. So this is how you are going to be. So you are going to be here. So she got already the assurance that she's going to go there. Uh, <laughs> While some of us, some one of us, some you know, among us saw it, we, are, we, don't, we don't know exactly where we are going. But she, she got it. And it was a, what I said, I'm going to listen to it properly. That is why for me today, this gospel is more than just uh, preaching and sitting in the church. No, I have to go higher. There's something which happened to me. I didn't want to tell my wife, but so I didn't want, want to, to talk about it. It is just, I was traveling with two of my brothers, one passed away and one with my brother who is preaching in, in Kinshasa. And while they're traveling, he was driving, and we're passing by a seashore, it's like a, the, way, the sea there, and the road was just going around the, the shore. But there were a big tempest on the, on the sea, and the waves were just going ah, high, and then the water was just coming even on the with the motorway where we are driving, I told them, wow, that is so dangerous. The weather is really, really bad. But as we are driving, suddenly we reach in a place where there were a big rock in the sea, close to the shore. It was like a mountain, but not very high, but the rock was there. And by the drop, the water was, was calm. 
And I said, wow. So on the side, let's say we are driving like that, on the left, the sea was so rough. And we have a rock, and on the right, nothing, it was just peaceful. So like the waves were just dying when they came to that water. And uh, when I looked, so a lot, a lot of people were sitting by this side where it was peaceful, looking at the water and at the rock. And when I look at the, that uh, by the, the bottom of that rock, it was like they met some, uh, uh, um, uh, some, uh, like, uh, how you call it, um, um, in French, it's like, it is like a, a, a channel where the water, can, uh, how you can, can call it in, in English, I don't know, where the water was running, but it was just calm. And by looking from where I was, I could see that people were, you know, people were just in that water walking and uh, picking up what fish. But they were not, uh, they were not fishing with, um, with uh, the, the, the lines or whatever, but they were just going and catching up, a fish, uh, uh, catching up fish with their hands. I said, what would we like to be, to be there? So we stopped the car, I start running to go in the water. And when I came, I said, okay, it is still strange. Maybe those things are belonging to someone and I have to ask for authorization first. I didn't know exactly what to do. So I went down, take a, took a fish, big fish. It was like, uh, no, like uh, what you, uh, we eat now, what you call in French, dorade and, uh, and uh, all uh, uh, some, um, like uh, tilapia, but they were so nice, look, nice looking. And I put back. I catch another, I got the first one, which was a big one, like a, a, a pink. And then I put it back, and one was black. And it back me, but it was so painful. I put it back, I said, maybe I have to, maybe it's it belonging to something. It is a private uh, um, place. But some, someone told me, not someone told me, but after I understood that, no, everybody was free to catch fish. So I catch, I catch two, you know, you know, uh, the shopping bags, plastic shopping bags. I put only two fish in it. And there was so, the, the, fish, the bag was almost, uh, Tearing up by itself. Anyhow, things will continue. And then, uh, when I so I took the fish, I took them back out. So I went back again to try to catch more fish. And when I guess like, like the number of fish are going down, and I went finally under something just like a, a cave. And the water was passing under, just by that mountain, under. And looking at the side, I saw like someone, not someone, but it was written on the rock, Holy Bible. And a lot of uh, scriptures from the Bible. I said, wow, don't be here. It is like it is a, like a kind of library or church. I said, wow. And the water was running, so we catching fish. So I was not trying to find a place where I could get uh, 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 more fish. When I saw a lady, a black lady sitting, and I told her, okay, is it, uh, uh, can I uh, get fish to send here? Yeah, everybody's getting. So now I went to a place with like a hole to try to, get to, to catch the fish there. And one lady was there picking up fish. I said, okay, I'm going to wait for her to finish because it was just like a, like a, like a pit. So when she finished, I went to take fish and I went, I jumped back. I said, wow, what is happening here? The fish which was taking the, they were frozen, but in the water. It is not coming from the uh, uh, freezer. I said, what happened? She said, oh, this is mine, uh, uh, they are to sell, they are for sale. I said, frozen, in the water which is warm. Anyhow, I said, okay, how much are you selling them for? She told me something, I said, no, no, I, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I don't know the price, but we speak to my wife. And by the time I heard uh, my wife talking, speaking to someone, because she was not with us in the car. I said, my wife will come to deal with you because me, I don't know nothing about those things. And uh, I heard that for speaking to someone like she met someone who did meet in the church. She said, oh, you, so now you have minister to say, yes, that's what I was saying. I didn't know who it was. So I came back and met, I met them. And um, she introduced me to that person. And the person by seeing me was like, uh, he was embarrassed. He didn't know what to do. I said, the minister. 
They said, yeah, and then he, he could not try to run back. And my wife took move her away. He said, his name is Paul Mukendi. I said, oh, you're Paul Mukendi too. And I said, but this person, I know him. And like he was running for me. Anyhow, I came out of it. And then I woke up. I started praying to God. I said, Lord, make me to a fisherman like Peter and John and Andrew said, the fish was so wonderful. I said, Lord, please, you show me something. Let me be a fisherman too, as you did for your disciples in that time. And there was a, there's a brother, I don't want to give his name. He gave uh, some uh, post on the networks, uh, social networks, something very good. He was saying that you can be a good preacher. You can have a lot of success in what you are doing. But if you are not connected to what God is doing today, he was speaking especially without mentioning it about uh, the ministry of uh, Matthew 24, 45, and so forth. So you are, you are nothing. Even though if you have a lot of success in this world, it is not counting in the presence of God. Amen. And uh, I said, he's right. As you said, amen, it is true. But you know, today it is not only by knowing it, but, but to live it. You know, that if you are listening, because uh, I'm trying to be in, uh, to be updated with all the messages preached this time, but it is the work. You know, sometimes I don't have, I'm always listening sometime after. If you listen to the message preached Saturday, Brother Frank came back on this psalm. Yeah. I don't know if you noticed, came back on it. And he started preaching on the poor prisoner of Christ, but he was talking to about the respect. I listened to it, I listened to him, I said, Lord, it is strange. It is strange. I was listening, so. Uh, I have to finish it. But to listen, I said, Lord, it is strange. He's talking, go to listen to the message preached last week, Saturday. He's talking about this psalm. He started from verse 8, going down, where he's saying that we see God made the covenant with Abraham. And when you continue to Israel, he will make it an everlasting covenant. He's coming back to the for Isaac, he done this and different things, and then when he kept, so he put his people in the everlasting covenant. It is so important. So I said, Lord, you are leading us to a place. I don't know yet where, but we are not behind. He's leading us to some glorious things. After saying that, we are coming back now to this message, not mine, as I told you. I was sitting in the office when it was he told me to preach on this message. That is why God didn't tell me to say this or say that. I'm just letting myself uh, to be led by the Holy Spirit to know exactly what the Lord, who wants me to preach on this message, to tell himself, his people, what he wants to say. <laughs> we saw that... Uh, uh, I'm going to read the statement we did read to... Uh, Moses, maybe as we are, we are not going to, to go to, to, to first go and uh, Google, look again for voice of God recording, and this message called respect. So maybe we can take the time bit by bit to read it and to know exactly. Voice of God recording, recordings. Yeah, I need to respect the voice. Yeah. So you have to go first to, um, no, not that one, go back. You don't have to know. Yeah, go to the multimedia. Even though, yeah. And then now, it's called, yeah, put now on the third search. Respect. With S at the end. Yes, now get it. Yeah. 
no, ya, no, 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 ya. Zoom it on top. Plus, yes. Now go to paragraph 45. Let's read this paragraph because I don't want to, as I said, I don't want to take it to go fast, it's no need because we have to find out what the Lord wants to tell us. I want to take a subject from the, of respect. Reading here, David crying out to the Lord. Respect, it is what we owe to God. And that is one thing that I would like to dream. Dream it is, you know, what is a dream now? Huh? Everybody knows what is a dream. To dream this to the heart of every person here tonight. That in all things that we see going on, try to understand it. Everything, not only in the preaching, as we saw it, uh, I'm going to come back to them again. Everything that we see going on, we must give respect to it or to them. This is how I'm See, we must respect it. And David said that when there were very few men of Israel, perhaps Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, who he was speaking of, very few men that rebuked nations and kings for them. So, God is not always explaining what he's doing to people, but he's revealing it to his children. It is something you must know. God is not always obliged to come to you and say, okay, I'm going to, to go to, to Jericho today. I have a mission therefore to go to save a, a lady. There. I'm going to explain no. He told it once when he was speaking to Abraham, when he was uh, in, uh, under the oak of, uh, of um, uh, Mamre. He, just, he said, will I go there and do what I have to do without revealing it to Abraham? So he told him what he was going to do. But he's, he's not obliged to explain to us what he's doing. But he can, he's coming and revealing to us his plan. So that we may, we may know what is going to be ahead of us. But in everything we do, a child of God, a true child of God, is someone who got respect inside of himself. You know, when a brother, coming back to Brother Frank in this uh, message, he was talking about uh, the ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ as a servant. And the Bible is saying, you will, you will not go to hear his voice on the street. He was not going to complain. He said, so are the children of God, the two children of God. They are not arguing on the street. They don't fight fasting on the street. No. They walk away of troubles. They do what how the Father is, uh, is, uh, is so is their own life too. Jesus Christ was not someone who here on the street uh, making noise. Yes, he was preaching. Besides that, no. No agreement. You want to agree, go, go on your own way. He was not doing that. So it is important as we saw it, I'm going to come back to it a bit before going ahead, to understand that God is, was rebuking the nations who were going to touch, even touching Abraham, Isaac or Jacob. Do you remember what he done to the Egyptians? Of the Philistines, when this king of the Philistines wanted to take her to touch Abraham's wife, he told him, be careful, don't touch this wife because she has a husband. Otherwise, I'm going to punish not only him, but all the, all the, all the nation. So the respect God is requiring from his the people, not only his people, it is to respect what he's doing. Um, 
on, uh, on paragraph, I think this is paragraph 105, I think, if you can maybe, uh, no, 81. Uh, we come to it, I just want to get some quotation in 81. Is, but what he was trying to get to them was this, you have got to respect what I do. God is telling his people, you have to respect everything me I do, God. We, we, don't, we don't understand everything. We don't know it. In the book of 1 um, uh, Corinthians, chapter 3, if you go there, we get a quotation which is going together with uh, what I just said here. 1 Corinthians, chapter 3. If you could start from verse 12. Listen to what the word of God is saying. What I'm saying here, brothers and sisters, it is not against nobody. It is God is trying to let us know because maybe something is going to happen. I don't know. We have to have respect. The nature of a human, it is just to judge one another. To criticize this and that. But he can criticize who don't know exactly what is going on. Maybe the Lord put that person to do that for a reason. Don't criticize pray one for end of all. Verse 12. Uh, is it chapter 3, Moses? Uh, no, first, first uh, no, 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 no. First, Corinthians uh, 13. What is happening? That is Moses chapter 3. Let me check. First, uh, yeah. Yeah, it is true, not first, 13. You are co a bit confused, yes. Yes, 13 Moses, sorry. Oh, is it chapter 13? 13, yes, chapter 13, verse 12. Sorry. He says, he says this. For now we see true at last, darkly, from the explanation of, in my Bible, it said that the glass you don't see darkly in true glass, but by the time the glass were true um, silver, it was not like today we get the glass, a proper glass. It was a silver and the, the image was not so net, so clear as you can see today. That is why I say, for now we see true at last. Darkly, but then face to face, then face to face, now I know, uh, but, but then face to face, now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. Which means, today we know everything partially. We don't know everything completely. We don't know what God will like us to know. We understand what he will judge, but we have to understand even with our children. I try to explain everything to the children. According to the age, I can say, okay, now I can explain you this, I can explain you that. But I'm not explaining everything to the children. I had a time to explain those things. That is why the Bible is saying that we know now, uh, uh, for now uh, we see through a glass, we are seeing our vision, our understanding is not so perfect. Because you are seeing like through a mirror which got fog in it. The vision is not clear. Even concerning the word of God. But we know that when we see him face to face, when we get as we are seeing, one can be wonderful. As we are singing just now. He said, when we walk in the Lord, coming to the place, now we will understand. We will know as we have been known. So there won't be no criticism no more. Everything will be perfect. So if we have this in mind, we should be very careful. 
for judging one another. Everything we see, even if it is something which is so difficult, pray for the person. Because you know, when you start to criticize, you, want, you are taking out of your heart the love for the person. You want to pray for the person in a right way. But how can you pray for someone? For his healing, for his repentance, if you don't like him. The prayer of someone who had hurt you, who have hurt you in his heart, is not, it is an abomination to God. You have to have this, uh, the, 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 the feeling, the heart loving heart, to feel the, 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 the sickness and trouble of your, 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 your brother or your sister. I remember once Brother Vanam was telling this uh, testimony, I think he was in India. Someone came in the prayer line, he didn't have no shoes. Was it in India? I think so. And then he looked, he said he had to put his feet, uh, his foot close to him, but the size of the same. He wanted to take his, uh, his, uh, his, uh, his suit to give him. You know, you have to come to a place where you can feel that Christ, he can be touched by the feeling of our, our infirmity, our sickness, our troubles. So can you pray rightly for a person? Try to imagine your own child. You only one child. He's sick. He's close to death. Can you tell me how you're going to pray for the child? Can you pray like uh, you are thinking on the uh, football game which is going to pass uh, on the TV? You are thinking of, uh, okay, when I finish here, I'm going to go to do some shopping in the market. I think even the market, football or whatever, won't have no meaning with time. Because you are focused on the well-being of your own child. So it is the same thing for the church of the living God. For us, the children of God. Something which is happening now, as it is not the, the people said, the devil in the people. He's causing hatred, rejection, all those things. And it is causing people to take the Holy Spirit to, to, to just cast him out of a out of a congregation. And they are wondering how they don't have no progress. They can be singing, shouting, Musa, we have here. No, but the Holy Spirit is not there. God is not in the midst. That is what we are <coughs> looking at now. Trying to understand that God is asking respect for his children. Let me say, go back to what happened we were talking last week about in number 12. I don't, I don't have to read it again. When Aaron and Miriam were mocking the brother because he took this Ethiopian lady as his wife. As I did tell you before, when I was reading about uh, this uh, respect to the servant of the Lord, for me it is a no, okay, he's a minister, okay. I have to respect uh, and so forth. But I never thought that God was extending, expanding this respect to everything the person was doing. God was looking to help all the domain of his life who have to have to respect. Because when someone is belonging to God, it is like, a, to make you understand it properly, you know, in the uh, tabernacle of it, in the desert, God had a uh, um, uh, thing, tools, different things for the service, even cups, plates, Folks, different things. When this uh, king of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar, or Belshazzar, sorry, he took it, the cups of the Lord to go to drink in them, he put himself a, a, a curse on him. What happened? When something is being uh, dedicated to the Lord, it belongs to him. There's not one bit of it 
which can be used without getting a problem. Everything belongs to God. And what belongs to God has to be respected. Completely. The same thing we have with uh, today in the churches, like with the offerings, with the books, with uh, even uh, projector, everything. When you dedicate those things to God, you must know that you have to deal with them with a different way. Amen. The churches here are not mine, they are not yours, they are to God. So when you are coming in, you can be cooking, kicking on them, doing what you want. No, they belong to God. They are dedicated to God, so respect them. We have to have it. It is sometimes, okay, we don't have, it is a big problem for me. We don't have enough place here, so sometimes to talk after the gathering. But even this place belongs to God. You cannot come and start talking, playing, Speaking on your phone. No, 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 you cannot. Want to speak to the phone? Go out. Respect God. Can you, you answer to the phone if you are in the presence of a queen, of a king? You said, Ooh, you will try to, 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 to stop it, to silence it, because you are in the presence of a queen, of a king, even the prime minister. When you finish, you said, oh, you are you call it, turn to the person. But here it is, God is here. And let everybody be silent and listen to what he's saying or what is in his presence. Let everything every knee bow. Let everybody respect this place. It is how the Lord is. When the people were selling um, gods and different things, Jesus Christ was mad. He said, my, 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 the house of my father should be called a house of prayer. You, you made it a, 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 a thief then. So you are doing everything in the house of my, or my, or, or the house of my, God, or my father. So we have to understand that everything belonging to God must be respect, regarded also as holy things. And with the holy things, don't play with them. That is why when you look today, when I also heard the ministers, they are using the title, the, the offerings, sometimes uh, likely. But they are, are not things for you. God, when he's talking about it, he said that you are stealing me. He did not say that you are stealing the church. No, you are stealing me. Says in your heart, in the offering and the tithes. No, brother, who are listening to me, it is not saying that we don't preach. For me, I, I want someone who's paying the tithe to be a Christian. Otherwise, you understand it. Give your offerings with your heart. Oh, brother Paul forced us to give a tithe. Now I don't know how to pay my bills. So you're not a Christian. But when you are giving to God, you are giving with your heart. Because God said, give to me and put me at the test. You see if I will not give you back. <laughs> So it is the respect to God. So Moses, uh, sorry, Miriam and her, her brother spoke about Moses number 12. We read it last time. So that, oh, he's not only the Holy One. He's not only the only one minister. We too, we get ministries. You, you are Holy High Priest. Me, I'm a prophetess. So what do you think that he is? He, yeah, yeah, he's making mistakes as everyone. And God heard it. And God, when he came, he didn't tell them that he didn't misunderstood what Moses was preaching. He didn't tell them, he didn't rebuke them. He said, you lack respect to Moses because to me, you lack respect. I would like everybody who is listening to understand what God is trying to make us know. We are hearing a lot of things going on. People don't have respect. If, uh, even though brother, even the Sabbath, uh, we don't, we don't believe, uh, we don't believe the same, uh, the same way. We don't see the things in the same way. That does not allow me, who allow you, to lack respect one another for another. No, 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 there's no, there's no shortcut. There's no exception saying that, okay, Brother Paul is not believing in the seven tongues, so, 
Don't, don't look at him like a servant of God. It is your opinion. But did God tell you that? To say so. Oh, me too. On the other side. Oh, they are not uh, believing in the, in, the, in, uh, believing in the seven thunders. I don't want to respect them. No, God didn't tell me so. Even the Pope. I should respect him. I should respect him. What God is asking me to do, it is to pray for his people. Remember this uh, story about, uh, again, Brother Branham. I'm saying this thing has become in, uh, in my spirit, in my mind. When he went to, to have his lunch in the, uh, in the, uh, the pub, let's call it so. And there he found this lady. She was there, dressed so badly and uh, smoking and... Uh, Okay, he starts standing there, he was just saying, Lord, how can you allow such things? Why, they, why you don't destroy this earth and then everything is finished? <laughs> you know the story. So God said, okay, fine. So God showed him the mistake, but his own mistakes. And when God has come in to punish him, the blood of Jesus Christ. Shh. So God said, told him, okay. Me, I forgive you your, your mistakes. So you want me to destroy them? Said, I'm giving to everybody. They have found the love of God so great because said, love, God so loved the world, but it's difficult to understand it. God, God was saying what we were doing. It was bad. Even that she, that led, she was a sister, backslidden sister from a church. And she knew that Bobby Branham was in the city. But she was sitting there in a pub, defining herself. So God said, I'm giving to everybody the chance to repent, to come to me. I want to I won't destroy them. So that is how Bobby Branham went to the sister, said, spoke, speaking to her. She said, are you Bobby Branham? I'm ashamed of myself. I've done so wrong. I've done so bad things. Can God still accept me? He said, yes, here if you want. You know what happened? The, the blood of Jesus Christ was applied on her sin, and she came back to God. And when, said, when he finished praying, he saw the policeman who was doing uh, wrong things. He held his heart out, the knee on the floor. Everybody was praying you know, in, the, in the pub. <laughs> You and me, we are going to say, Lord, how we could say like a, uh, how the, 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 the John and his, his brother said, Lord, order for, for the fire of heaven to come down to burn up this, this place. But I didn't come here for that. I came to save, not to destroy. So that is something we have to look at it very carefully. So Mary, Miriam, and uh, Aaron, they were ministers, so you can say so. One with a gift, and one with a high priest. There's no exception in the thing of God. Before I move forward, let's take, uh, take Jude, which is just before, before uh, Revelation. I think it's chapter verse 12. Jude. There's only one chapter. Let me check here. <coughs> he said this. Okay, <clears throat> these are spots. Uh, these are spots in your face of charity. When they face with you, yeah. Oh, maybe uh, no. Go to verse eleven. Yes. Um, let me see. 
Let me check if it's in my English Bible. There's, there's one verse I want just to read, not to take everything. Yes, uh, no, I went to, I went to, let's take from verse 8. I could not find what I wanted to read. Nick. Likewise, all these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despise dominion, and speak evil of dignities. Yes. He said, you see, there's a difference, as I said, between a child of God and the child of, of evil. The seed of serpent. He said, likewise, can you maybe take verse 7? Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manners, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal life, eternal fire, sorry. Likewise, also these filthy dreamers. This, our people, defile the flesh, despise dominion, which means they are rejecting the authorities. It is dominion, despise dominion, which means they are, uh, in French it is said, um, mm, méprise l'autorité. The palace authority, but l'autorité is God. This despised dominion of authority and speak evil of dignities, of glories, the same. So it is something here <clears throat> that uh, those people with a filthy, they are filthy dreamers, I say in the case of them, they are also entraîned by their reverie, which means they have the hope in something else. They are hoping, they are dreaming of being this, of being to heaven in on their own way. If they are like Nimrod and the rest of the people of the time, they wanted to get to heaven with their own way by making a, uh, a leather, touching the ground until the heaven. Did you ever see where the heaven? <laughs> but then they wanted to go to heaven. So was people to they have their own understanding that they are dreamers. They are saying they are filthy dreamers, which is bad dreamers. Defile dreamers. And they defile uh, uh, dreamers, defile the flesh. Yeah, they are just uh, how many they are uh, uh, defiling. How can I say defiling? They are staining, if I can say so, their own flesh. Rejecting or uh, but have no respect for the authority and speak evil of the glories of the dignities. Now, yet, look at the difference now. Michael, the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, does not bring against him a railing accusation. But said the Lord of the beauty. In front wedding here, it is in front it is, he didn't insult him. When he was talking, trying to show that he had the muscles, the can't Michael was just looking at him and said, May the Lord rebuke you. May the Lord rebuke you. He didn't, okay. Uh, uh, let's say uh, this. But they speak evil of those things which they know not, you see. But those people in the churches, they are speaking evil with all the things they don't know. But what they know naturally as brute beast. In those things they corrupt themselves. You don't know nothing, you want to add your comments. And your comments are just according to your dreams. Maybe you, something happened to your pastor. You are always dreaming to be a pastor. Now nah, it is occasion. Let me take him down and then let me be a preacher. The preachings of the world are according to God's callings. 
If God didn't call you, maybe even if your pastor, you put him out, he won't use you. No. The people that say, but think that they can go to preach because they know how to speak French or to speak other languages. No. If the Lord never called you, you're going to bring death in the church. It's so important to understand. Everybody has to respect. That is why I said right here. But this evil, uh, but this speak of evil of those things which they know not. The Lord didn't record in them. Didn't show you, didn't uh, explain you what was going on. And not only what, but what they know naturally. You understand? They're speaking naturally, but the Bible is saying in 1 Corinthians, it is a, uh, uh, we judge, so spiritually we judge what God is doing, not naturally. It is a spiritual, we have to have a spiritual understanding of what God is doing. Then they are just some beast. And what kind of beast? They are just some. Uh, wild beast. In those things, they corrupt themselves. You understand? They are talking about things. They are corrupting themselves, which means they are going beyond what God is saying. They are bringing just a confusion in themselves. Brothers and sisters, there's some example I could give here. I said I'm not going to go too fast to this message. If you take in. Uh, the book of Isaiah chapter 20. Isaiah chapter 20. There's something which is, uh, sometimes when you read this book, there are things you can understand, even something, wonder why God did them. Why the Lord did them. We are going to read it, it's not long. We can read maybe from verse 1. Uh, to verse 3. Let's read to verse 3. In the year, uh, uh, Isaiah 20, yes. In the year the Tartan came unto Ashdod. When Sargon, the king of Assyria, sent him and fought against Ashdod and took it. At the same time spake the Lord by Isaiah, the son of Amos, saying, Go and lose the sackcloth from off thy loins, and put off thy shoe from thy foot. And he did so, walking naked and barefoot. <laughs> I'm sorry. Isaiah was not a little child. He was an adult, married with children. And the law of the Lord said that the child should not see the nakedness, nakedness of his dad. God is asking this man, old man, to undo his clothes, to take them off, to take off his shoes, and to walk on the street naked. Now you, you, saw, you see Isaiah. On the city center, in the city center of London, of big city or wherever, working like that naked. What are you going to say? The man gets mad, he's crazy. You can say whatever you want. But the man will tell you, brother, it is the Lord. He said, I can't believe the Lord can say something like it is against his word. It is the Lord. I have to obey. I can't say no. Said, but the Lord can do. But what we are saying is, it was, let's continue the reading. And the Lord said, like as my servant Isaiah, he was still his servant, had worked naked and barefoot three years for a sign and wonder upon Egypt and upon Ethiopia. So shall the king of Assyria lead away the Egyptian prisoners and the Ethiopians captive, young and old, naked and barefoot, even with the uh, buttock uncovered to the shame of Egypt. It was a sign to the nations. We can say, but Lord, we are not another way to do it. <laughs> we can ask him, Lord, 
It's just uh, such what 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 a shame. But Isaiah went to it. The spirit of the Lord was in it. You know, when the Lord is asking things to his servant, himself he can do the same. He won't never ask you something which cannot undertake himself. You know, when you're talking about our Lord Jesus Christ, it's the same. The Bible is saying in Isaiah 50, 53, if you go to Isaiah 53, I think it's verse 4. Isaiah 53. He said this. I think verse 4 I'm going to check. Yes, 54. A 52 part, sorry, verse 4. He said this. Yeah. Surely he had borne our griefs to Jesus Christ and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken. Smitten of God and afflicted. He is afflicted and uh, uh, in French it is said smitten from God and humiliated, if I can translate from French. Afflicted it is, uh, I don't know if it is, I can say it is the same thing as uh, uh, humiliated. But he who had been put to shame, that is humiliated. This is the translation of different, uh, of different translators. Let me see here how it is written in, uh, in, in uh, this Bible. Ah, it is in a, in a um, amplified Bible, he said this. But he was born, no, he has borne our griefs. And he has carried our sorrows and pains. Yet we assumed that he was stricken, shut down by God, and degraded and humiliated. You see, then they added, degraded and humiliated. When Jesus Christ, you can take it in uh, all the Gospels of uh, his disciples, John, Matthew, Le, Mark, Luke, and John, when he went on the cross, can you try to imagine it? They strip him down completely. No, they didn't leave nothing on him. I said, Lord, sometimes I think that Lord, was it? Excuse me to say that, but was it necessary to put him naked? He could not do the redemption work without exposing him like that. But this is human uh, thought. The Bible is saying in Romans chapter, we are going to come back to it. Romans chapter 11, he said, uh, uh, <laughs> oh, you know, sometimes it is just uh, human feelings. Romans chapter 11, from uh, uh, Romans chapter 8 here. Uh, <clears throat> Yes, let's start. Um, I can start. I want to where we can get all the. Okay. Lessons only uh, 33 and 34. All the depth of the riches and the wisdom and knowledge of God. Maybe if he did with. No, let's, let's read everything. So you can understand. Verse 20, uh, 25. I don't want you believers to be in aware of this mystery so that you will not be wise in your own opinion. That a passion hardening has, uh, has, uh, uh, has until the full number of the gentle has come in. He's talking about the Israel, no, the passion uh, happening has happened to Israel, sorry, because he did a, a, a jump or something. The passion happening has happened to Israel until the full number of Gentiles has come in. 
And so, all Israel, uh, all Israel uh, uh, will be saved, just as it is written. The deliverer will come from Zion. He will remove ungodliness from Jacob. This is my covenant with them. Will not take away their sins. From the standpoint of the gospel, the Jews are enemies for your sake. You understand? But from the standpoint of God's, of God's choice, they are still loved by Him for the sake of the fathers. I'll come to it later. For the gift and the calling of God are irrevocable. Um, we go, uh, for he does not wish to with what is given for, uh, nor does he change his mind about those whom he gives his grace or to whom he sent his calls. Okay, it is the comments of uh, Amplified Bible. Just as you once were disobedient and failed to listen to God, but have now obtained mercy because of uh, disobedience, so they too have now become disobedient, so that they too may one day receive mercy because of the mercy shown to you. We explain it later. For God has imprisoned all his disobedient, disobedience so that he may show mercy. No, for God has imprisoned all in disobedience, sorry in disobedience, so that he may show mercy to all, Jew and gentle alike. It's in bracket here. All, now verse 33, all the death of the riches and the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgment and decisions. Understand. How unsearchable. It is impossible to understand. His judgment and decision and how effect how you pronounce it? How it is written here what is it's different than it is how unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. Is it another word? Effect and effect chomable, I don't know. And intressable are his ways. For who has known the mind of the Lord? Or who has been his counselor? The Bible is saying, when I was saying, he said, Lord, why my Savior was stripped like that on the cross? But it is how the Lord decided it. The humiliation has to go so far until the point. He said, who was, who knows the thought of the Lord? And who was his counselor? Who can judge his decisions? Who can say that, Lord, here you made a mistake? Come back. Correct your mistake. He tells us say him, For who has known the mind of the Lord? And who has been his counselor? <laughs> so when the Isaiah was working naked, the Lord said, He done it because it was the Spirit of God in him. How we do it? The humiliation of our Lord was described by God to be like that. Oh, I'm not so, let's say, like a, more, I have much morality than God. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, God is higher than me. I said, Lord, you should not do something like that. He said, no. It is how it was written that you will be degraded and humiliated. That is how he was going to be humiliated. Spit on him, hit him, beat him. They put a, 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 a crown of stone on, uh, uh, upon his head, beat him, mocked everything. And then, in the presence of all those women who were following him, calling him Rabbi, Lord, Master, were looking at the Master naked on the cross, humiliated. Who can say that the decision of God was bad? This is the question here. And he says that who or who has given to him that it will be paid back to him? 
Who has given first? Who can judge God? Can you understand? I see you reading in paragraph 81, you did it now. God wants you to know that you have to respect everything he does. You have to respect to accept that what he done, it is perfect. David in Psalm 119, I think verse uh, uh, 96, something like that. 119. Oh, the time went so quickly, maybe because you start late. Um, Okay. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, let me read from verse 89 to verse 96. Psalm 119, 89. Forever, O oh Lord, your work is settled in heaven. Standing firm and unchangeable, which is the comment of Amplified Bible. Your faithfulness continues from generation to generation. You have established the earth and its stands. They continue this day according, they continue this day according to your ordinance. For all things are your servants. Everything in the universe are your servants. Your law had not been, your Lord had not been my delight, then I would have perished. In my time of trouble. If you were Lord, if you law, sorry. If your law had not been my delight, then I would have perished in my time of trouble. I will never forget your precepts, for by them you have revived me and given me life. I am yours, save me. For I have sought you precept and required them them. The wicked wait for me to destroy me, but I will consider your testimonies. Listen, verse 96 now. I have seen that all, in bracket it is human, perfection has its limits. Everything the man does, as a perfection, it got limits. In bracket it said, no matter how grand and perfect and noble. But <coughs> listen, your commandment is exceedingly broad and extends without limit. The commandment of God have no limits, which means they are forever. They are perfect in everything. That is why nobody can come to God and say, okay, Lord, you made a mistake. You know, it's like when Jesus was speaking to the disciples and Peter was going to, to die. Peter said, no, no, Lord, that won't happen to you. Yet. Back for me, Satan. Do you understand it? He wanted to change the word of God. He said, you, you are not God. You are Satan speaking to my disciple, out of him. So that is why the respect is something very important when you lack the respect. And even look at the, you know, in uh, Exodus 20, verse, uh, verse, um, verse 5. No, verse 12. When God is talking about the, to the children, honor your father and your mother, honor your parents, so that the Lord, here yeah, you can put it, I think it's verse 12. Me for the verses I'm on. Yeah, yeah, verse 12. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God gave thee. It is just things we see every day. When a child is lacking respect for his parents, look what has happened to him. We saw it so many, in so many occasions. I have a Someone who told me was that one day his dad yeah. was arguing with his mom. 
and now he got mad. But inside of living, or maybe, maybe slum his wife and go away, he told his elder son, beat her. And the boy stupidly went and beat him up. And from the day, his brain just turned out. He's not sitting here, he's walking up and down, but no, but he does have no stability in his life. Everything is gone. He was a good person, and then poof. And someone has told me the another story. One day, a boy, who I know very well, he was arguing with his dad. And the dad got so upset, he cursed at him. The boy finished, he got a degree in mechanic, but he said he is not uh, able to do nothing. His big brother said to me, Paul, see what happened. We, the parents, have to control ourselves, our uh, temper sometimes. Look what he said, look what, what has happened to this boy. Oh, no, this is because it is by honoring your father and your mom, you are honoring God. By lacking respect to them, you are lacking respect to God. And there are consequences. This is just natural things. But look at the word of God in general. The things which are important to know in life. In as a Christian. I don't say that, okay, whoever that is uh, preaching some uh, wrong teachings that I have to... No, I can just move away and say, no, I can't accept it, but respect the person. Because you saw that the archangel of Gabriel, Jesus did insult the devil. You go in Zechariah chapter 3, you get the, the, the same image. When this, uh, um, uh, the high priest, you can, Joshua, Zechariah chapter 3, you are going to saw because I didn't know that it was so late. Chapter 3. Just the beginning of the chapter, verse 1 and verse 2, if you know. No, verse 1 and verse 2, yes. Yep. Then the guiding angel showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord and Satan standing at Joshua's right hand to be his adversary and to accuse him. And the Lord said to Satan, the Lord rebuked you, Satan. Even the Lord who has chosen Jerusalem rebuke you. Is this not a log snatched and rescued from the fire? Do you understand? <coughs> Exactly what you saw in uh, the book of uh, Jude. The Lord didn't insult Satan. He knew that what was with. No Satan is uh, causing us to, to, to commit sin. And after he jumping us and said, Lord, it is him. No, it, the Lord knows. Who knows how we, we, we went through the wrong path. The person who did it was uh, accusing you now. Accusing you. And the Lord said, may the Lord rebuke you, Satan. It is you. It is you, the enemy. Not this. This is a, a, a log snatched out of a fire. Rescued from a fire. And you want me to destroy him. May the Lord rebuke you. Never insult him. Even if he can come like in the book of Job. When the children of God are there, he's coming too. The Lord never said, wait, 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 out. My enemies. Where do you come from, Satan? Where do you come from? Talking to him like a friend. Well, he knows that this person, this spirit is a bad spirit. He destroying everything I have on earth. But he's still saying, where are you coming from? Ah, are you okay? How, how are you? How is your business going on? You're still uh, destroying a lot? <laughs> the Lord speaking to Satan as he was speaking to his friend. That is, we don't understand everything, but we have to respect the Lord. 
it is like uh, you hear people about the Jews. People say, if we were God with love, how could he allow that we killed so many Jews during the, <coughs> the Holocaust and so forth? You don't know what you are saying. But the devil will point you. Yeah, you see, you see, he's not a good God. He does not the God of love. He should not allow. You see how many children babies are killed. God knew it. But still, it was hard to happen like that. But when you get to heaven, you understand. All those babies will be waiting for us, young ladies, young men, saying, yes, we don't know our time. We have to go to die like that. But now we are here, living forevermore. May the Lord bless us uh, and help us. We carry on slowly when we have the Lord we allow. But the Bible is saying, who will judge? Who will who 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 was who knew the thought of God? And who is his counselor? Who can give him advice on the better way of doing things? He said, I know what I'm doing. Like the testimony I gave you about this uh, sister, I said, when I got back home, I'm going to try to listen to it again. And they said, why were you crying? Why are you sad of? Look at your daughter. And she could not even recognize her. If she is nothing, she's, she's better, you look at her. You too, when you come, you're going to be better. Now she was in the church, hallelujah. <laughs> said, yes, but it is hard to lose a child. But God said, she's now in the paradise with me. She's in a better place than where we are. Did I not do a good thing? So why are you condemning me? May the Lord help us to have that kind of vision to understand what he's, what he's doing. Maybe it is in French, I don't know. No, not one. No, not one. Mon seul abri, seul ami, seul est Jésus seul, Jésus seul. Les ans s'en vont, cet ami me reste. Jésus seul, Jésus seul. Amen. Oh, oh.
invitation you have given to each one of us to come in your house to listen to you, your counsels, to listen to your word, Lord, so that we may know how to work in this world, not defiling our bodies, not be a filthy dreamers, or filthy dreamers, I mean, but obeying to your word every day. And knowing that, Lord, you are your witnesses on, on this earth for this day. Lord, we heard what you have said, Lord, but it is you who can fulfill everything you said in our hearts. But because the will and the desire, Lord, the ability are all of them coming from you. And it can you, Lord, who can bring them to the perfection. So bless each one of us, Lord. We have heard. Now, Lord, let go back home and be with the one who can leave those things through us so that the people around may see that we have been with Jesus Christ. As we did see it in the first disciples after your departure to heaven. Lord, we thank you for your blessings among us tonight. And you commit ourselves in your hand again, Lord, for the coming days, if there is some days remaining for us on this earth. Be the one blessing us, Lord, to all when you come here for the prayer meeting, Lord. Be in our midst, Lord. Give to our hearts uh, this uh, flame. Put them a flame, Lord, so that uh, we, we cannot linger outside when it is time to come for the prayer service of the church. We commit everything in your hand, Lord, as we have prayed so in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. May the Lord bless you all. Amen. We have finished for today.